kindergartners, welcome to Thursday, December 10th. This is your TV classroom. I'm coming to you from my office at my home today. You may hear my son Oliver in the background back here behind this wall. He's taking a nap, but he's not really wanting to go to sleep yet. So you may hear some sounds from him, but don't worry, he'll go to sleep soon. So how are you? I have some new tools today to use. I have this cool pen that I can write on my laptop screen and I have a new light that gives makes me brighter for you and a new microphone so you can hear me better. I'm so excited. If you see me look down, it means I'm looking at my laptop screen and writing on it. Also, you might notice that my writing's a little squiggly because this pen isn't like using a pencil on paper. So it's really hard to get perfectly formed numbers and letters. So thank you for being understanding. I am trying my very best. Okay, let's see what we're gonna do today. Before we begin, I want you to make sure you have your materials. Please get your whiteboard and marker, your learning buddy, and 10 items to count with, okay? All right, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds and then you're gonna come back here and be ready to check in on your zone. Okay, are you ready? To check your zone, you need to ask yourself, what's my body feeling? What's my brain feeling? And what am I thinking? My brain is feeling calm. My body's feeling calm. And my emotions are feeling happy. I'm in the green zone. Tell your learning buddy, what zone are you in today? Why are you in that zone? Great job. All right, that means that we are ready to learn. Here we go. How many do you see? Two, how did you know it was two? You saw one and one, kiss your brain. How many do you see now? Still two, does it matter where it is in the tens frame? No, it doesn't matter, I can move them anywhere and it will still be two as long as I don't put any more on or take any off. If I put more on or take some off, then the number will change. Like that, is our number gonna change now? How many do you see? How did you know there were four? Okay, a group of three and a group, oh, excuse me, maybe I'm a little bit tired and I didn't realize it. And a group of one. Three and one makes four. Okay, how else might you see four? There were two and then two more makes four. Great job, kindergartners. Oh, take a look at how that changed. There were four and then we added one more. So how many are there? Wait, we added more than one more. Look, we added another one down here. We added two more. Hmm, how many are there? Six, how do you know that there's six? Four and two is six. Okay, how else might there be six? Yeah, three and three makes six. Great job. Ooh, hmm, how many are there? How did you know it was eight? Oh, because 10 is all of them. And if you count back two, you get to eight. Okay, what's another way we could know it was eight? Yeah, you might see four and four. Okay, what's another way we might know it's eight? Six and two. What's another way we might know it's eight? You might see the twos. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, nice job. Okay, friends, today we are learning to identify number pairs that make 10. 
And that's why I wanted you to get 10 counters. So what I would like you to do is put your 10 counters all in a row touching. So if these were counters, this is what it would look like. One, whoops, let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're gonna use those counters today and your marker for your whiteboard. And I'm gonna tell you where to put your break apart stick and then we're gonna count how many are on the left and how many are on the right. Okay, here we go. First of all, we're just gonna count and say how many we see. Look at the yellow counters. How many counters do you see? You should be able to do this one easy. Yep, it's five when there's 10 frame and the whole top row is filled, there's five. What about the red counters? How many do you see? Yeah, nine. How did you know there were nine? You might have counted five and four, or you might know that the whole frame is 10 and one less is nine. If this is nine, how much is this gonna be? Oh, how did you know it was eight? Because eight is one less than nine and there's one less counter. Okay, how many blue counters do you see? How did you know it was six? Yeah, five and one more is six. Remember we learned that before, that the next number is just one more. So if I know five, and I put one more, then I know it's six. If I know eight and I put one more, then I know it's nine. Okay, our brains are warmed up and ready. Let's go. Huh, what do you see here? How many baseballs do you see? Well, first of all, how many of the darker baseballs are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. On your counters, I want you to count from left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then put your pen in between. So you have six and what makes your 10 counters? Six and four makes 10. So six and four makes 10 baseballs. Say that with me. Six, Six and four makes 10 baseballs. Okay, so we've got six and four. We're gonna keep that one. I'm gonna write it over here. Six and four, that's one of our groups. So we did the baseballs, we can cross them off. Okay, now let's look at the basketballs. Well, how many orange basketballs are there? Five, six, seven, eight. There's eight orange basketballs. Can you put your pen after eight counters? And how many more counters do you see? Two, just like there's two blue basketballs. So we can say eight and two makes 10 because we have eight, actually I'm gonna use a dark color so you can see. We have eight and two. Great, okay, so we've done the basketballs, we've done the baseballs. Which one should we do next? Do you wanna do soccer balls next? How many yellow soccer balls are there? Can you put seven counters and then your break apart stick? Seven soccer balls. How many white soccer balls are there? Count the counters you have left. How many are there? Three. So what can we say? What are the partners that make 10? Yeah, seven. Oops, I need white. Seven plus three makes 10. And three plus seven makes 10 too. If we start with the white ones first, three and seven, seven and three, six and four, four and six, eight and two, two and eight. Okay, let's look at the four square balls or the rubber balls or the dodge balls. 
Lots of people call them different things. I just like to call them red bouncy balls. How many do you see? Nine. Can you build nine counters and put a break apart stick? Nine. How many more balls will we need to make 10? I'm going to make it blue. Let's use this. One more. Yes, I did one more ball made 10. So nine and one makes 10. So it me nine and one makes 10. Or one and nine makes 10. Either way. Okay, the baseball bats. How many bats do you see that are white? Yep, five. How many bats do you see that are yellow? Five. Five and five make 10. Very good, kindergartners. Okay, now we have to match. Let's look at the basketballs and soccer ball. What do we see there? How many basketballs? Nine. And how many soccer balls? One. Which numbers and words should I match it to? Five, I'm gonna highlight it so we can read it. Five and five, nine and one, or two and eight. Which one do you think matches? Nine and one, very good. Okay, let's look at the next one. What do you see? Five baseballs and five basketballs. So, five and five. Five and five make 10. Say it with me. Five and five make 10. Very good. Now we have the bouncy balls and the soccer balls. What do you see there? Two and eight. Two and eight make 10. There it is. Two and eight. Excellent job. Can you make 10 if you have zero in one group? Yeah, how many more would you need? 10. Can you make 10 with two groups that each have the same amount? Think about your hands, put your hands up. How many fingers do you have? 10. How many fingers on this side? Five. How many fingers on this side? Five, do they have the same amount on each side? And all together we have 10. So can we make 10 with two groups of the same amount? Yes, what amount is that? Yeah, it's five. Excellent job, kindergartners. Okay. Hmm. We have to match the first one, private think time. Which one would you match it to? Seven and three, which is this one. Here, let me get my highlighter for you. Seven and three, five and five, or six and four? Hmm, you go ahead and tell me. Which one would you match it to? Hmm. If you said five and five, you are correct. There are five tennis balls and five dog bones. Okay, look at the next picture. Hmm. Seven and three or six and four? Hmm. How many red ones are there? Seven. How many yellow ones? Three, if you said seven and three, you are correct. Nice job, kindergartners. All right, your assignment for today is to do page 189 and 190. You need two different color crayons for 189, and you're gonna color in the parts of 10 with two different colors. For example, I might use red and blue, and I'm gonna color in some of the baseballs red and some of the baseballs blue, some of the basketballs red and some of the basketballs blue. And when I'm done, I'm gonna say how many red and how many blue I had of each color. If you're still not sure what to do, down below an adult can read the directions to you or you can have an adult call your teacher and they can help you. Then you're gonna do page 190 and you're gonna look at the picture and you're gonna match it to the words that match. 
For example, the kittens, there are seven little kittens and three dogs. So you're gonna find the words that match seven and three, and then you'll draw a line to it. And then you move on to the hats and then the soccer balls, okay? All right. Today we learned to identify the number pairs that make 10. We can build a 10, we can tell the parts that made the 10, and we can say blank and blank make 10. Kindergartners, that's what we did today. Kiss your brains. You did learning. You're becoming very strong mathematicians and I'm proud of you. Now it's time for your five minute break. You need to get a drink of water. You need to make sure you have your learning buddy ready. And you, when you come back, you'll be with Ms. Oslin for phonics. All right, okay. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great night. Bye kindergartners.
kindergartners, welcome back from your break and welcome back to your TV classroom in Mrs. Oslin's dining room. I'm so glad you're here. I also hope that you had the opportunity to gather your materials. You will need your whiteboard and marker and your learning buddy today. You'll remember today and every day when we come together, your job is to listen, share, and read and write. We know that we are strong listeners when we have active listening posture. And this means, say it with me, eyes watching, ears listening, voice quiet, body still. And sometimes we still need to remind ourselves to focus. So if you find that your mind starts thinking about something else, you can just gently use some positive self-talk and say, Focus, self-focus. Okay, we are gonna warm up our brains by singing our alphabet song. And you'll remember we sing the letters that we already know louder than the others. Are you ready to sing and point with me? Make sure you're looking at those letters so your brain makes that connection between what they look like and what they're called, which sometimes helps us remember the sound. Here we go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Thank you so much for singing with me. I do have to say, I miss that when I'm at home, I don't have Mr. Kevin singing with me to help, but I'm sure he's out there singing with us. Today, we are learning to own more letters. You have learned so many letters. You know what they're called. You know what sound they make. You know how to write them. And you are using them in your writing. We're going to learn two new letters today. Two. And you'll remember that we, when we are learning a letter, we name it, we sound it, we write it, and we use it. How to learn a letter. Step one is you name it. Are you ready for me to show you the letters that we're going to learn today? This letter is called F. Name this letter F. This is the capital F. This is the lowercase f. What's it called? Good. F. F is also, you know what? Never mind, I'm gonna hold on to that little tip. This letter is called I. Name this letter, I. This is a lowercase I. Name this letter, I. The second thing we do when we name a letter is we sound it. Now, the letter F is, is one of those letters that if we know the name, it gives us a clue about the sound because the letter's name is F and the sound it makes is f, like in football. Sound the letter F. f. It's also in fin. Say the word fin. Good, did you hear? at the beginning of fin. I says I as in igloo. What does I say? I. It also says I like in the word insect. What's the word? Insect. Do you hear the I in insect? The third thing we do when we learn a letter is we write it. So get your whiteboard out, get the cap off, and get your pens ready to go. You're going to use my screen and follow my finger to say the letter pathway as we write our new letters. A capital F is a letter that is tall, so we say pens up. Line down, back up, little line out, and out. How'd that go? 
Good. Now erase your whiteboard and let's do a lowercase f. A lowercase f is also a letter that is tall. It starts with a hook. Do you see where the one is there? It's kind of lower and then you hook around. So here we go. This one can be tricky. We can do hard things. We can do hard things. Are you ready? All right, pens up. Hook from the top and line down, line across the center. How'd you do? Good, we'll keep practicing. Now let's practice writing a, a capital letter I. A capital letter I is a letter that is tall. So we say pens up, line down, line across the top, line across the bottom. Oops, you didn't see my line across the bottom. Line across the bottom, there we go. Now let's do a lowercase i. A lowercase i is a letter that is small. So we say pens out, line down, float a dot above. And just like with the letter J, we learned that the dot doesn't have to be really big. It can be small, but you still have to be able to see it. The fourth thing we do when we learn a get letter is you get to use it. So when you're reading and writing today, you're looking for the letters F that says and the letter I that says I, and you're going to use them to help you read words. You're going to look at the pictures in your book and you're going to listen to the beginning sounds and figure out, do you have a picture of something in your book that starts with a F or an I? And then you'll know that it's an F and an I. And when you are writing, writing your lists, your functional writing today, you are going to listen for those sounds and practice writing them. I am learning to own more letters and today we learned two new letters. Now we are going to practice writing all of the letters that we have learned. Now I'm not going to do it because I want to see what you can do on your own, on your whiteboard. So. Here we go. I'm going to try really hard because I'm, I have muscle memory now. When I say the letter formation, my, my brain and my body want to start writing the letter, but I can't because I want to see what you can do on your own. Okay. This is a capital letter A. A says A ah, and A says A. Capital is a letter that is tall. So pens up, slanted line down, slanted line down, little line connecting. Lowercase a says a ah, and a. Lowercase a is a letter that is small. So pens out, bump back around, line up, line back down. How'd you do with your capital and lowercase a's? Excellent job. Kiss your brain and erase. <gasps> Name this letter B. Sound this letter B. Capital B is a letter that is tall, pens up, line down, back up, bump around on the front, bump around on the front like a belly. Make sure, make sure your B is facing the same way mine. Lowercase B is a letter that is tall. We know B says B. So pens up, long line down, back up a scooch, bump around on the front like a belly. Ooh, what's this one? This is one of our newer ones. D, D says D. D, capital and lowercase d are both tall letters. So pens up, line down, back up, big bump around. Lowercase d, it's also tall. However, remember we start in the middle. We bump back around and stop, line up, line back down. Make sure your bump is on the back like a diaper. How'd you do with your D's? Nice job. Erase. <gasps> it's our new one. Do you remember what it's called? Whisper it. Yeah. F says, F is F and it says, good. All right, here we go. Uh, I will help mark this one. Pens up, line down, back up, little line out, little line out. Lowercase says good pens up hook from the top and line down little line across how'd you do with your new letter f x 
Excellent. Erase. Okay, this is our other new letter. It's called I. And I says I. Good. Capital I is a letter that's tall, so pens up, line down, line across the top, line across the bottom. This is the lowercase i. I says i, pens out, line down, float a dot above. How'd you do with your new letters? Fantastic, kiss your brain and erase. This is a capital J, a capital J, J is a letter that is tall. So pen, or yeah, pens up, line down and hook up, facing the right way and line across the top. Lowercase j, this is a letter that falls. Line down below, hook up, float a dot above, just like the I. This is a capital L. L says L. It's tall, pens up, line down, little line out. Oh, you're working so hard on owning so many letters? Okay, is this an I? Is it an L? Is it a one? It's an L. Excellent job, because if we were with Miss Wally, it might be a one. But here, when we're talking letters, we know it's an L. It's a capital, or excuse me, it's a lowercase letter. It's still tall, pens up, line down. I helped you with that one. Okay, M, capital M says, mm, it's a letter that's tall, pens up. Line down, back up, slanted line down, slanted line up, line down. Lowercase m says mmm, pens out, line down, back up, bump around, bump around, and down. Oh, I hear so many of you saying these letter formation pathways with me. This is a capital N. N says mmm, pens up, line down, Back up, slanted line down, line up. Lowercase n is a letter that's small and it says n. Mm. Uh, pens out, line down, back up, bump around and down. Capital R, R says R, good. And it's a letter that's tall, so pens up, line down, back up, bump around, Slanted line down. Lowercase r, it says er, and it's small. So we say pens out, line down, back up, tiny turn, and stop. How are you doing on your letters? Excellent job, kindergartners. Go ahead and erase your whiteboard. Here's our next one. Name this letter. Sound this letter. Let's write this letter. It's tall, so pens up. Bump around, slide down, bump around the other way, and stop. Make sure it's facing the correct way. Lowercase s says s. It's a letter that's small. Pens out, bump around, slide down, bump around the other way, and stop. You ready? Last one, erase. Name this letter. Sound this letter. Let's write this letter. It's tall, so pens up. Line down, line across the top. And here's our capital T, it says T. It's also tall, pens up, line down, little line across. Excellent job, kindergartners. Erase your whiteboards. Put the caps back on your pen so they click shut. And you'll remember your job is to read, read, read every day. Practice finding the letters and the sounds that we know. Practice looking for things in the pictures that start with letters that we know. Oh, practice writing your name in a snap. That's one we haven't talked about in a while and I just thought of it. So, write, do that when you're writing. Practice writing your name really quickly. Also practice lab labeling things in your pictures. That's part of functional writing. Use letters that you know. You have the letter formation chart in your packet to help you remember how to form the letters correctly. Our special guest coming up. I'm so excited. On Wednesday, December 16th, we're gonna have a video from our Tacoma Fire Department crew number one to learn all about what they do to help keep us safe in Tacoma. 
We also, on Wednesday, January 6th, we'll have our Washington State Senator-elect Nobles, who was just elected to our state Senate. We're so excited to have her in our TV classroom, learn about her history, her job, what, she's, what she does, how she got elected. We're, I'm so excited to meet her. Now, kindergartners, it's time for our affirmation. It's time to remind ourselves that we can do hard things. Go ahead and say that. We can do hard things. Stop and picture a time when you have done something hard. Take a minute. Now picture yourself using positive self-talk, saying, I can do hard things. Nice. Now let's practice saying it one more time. I can do hard things. Excellent job, kindergartners. Thank you so much for doing so much learning and owning so many letters with me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.